You are live. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to a, another episode of Bar Talk. We are at episode number 23 tonight, which is insane. Hello, Gabby. Hello, Michelle. Hello, Kiefer. Hi, guys. All right, welcome on in. So if you guys haven't noticed, Biggie Smalls isn't behind me today. Hi, Dave. Um, instead, I have this. So the beauty of your family owning a bar is that you can get the keys. And uh, I kind of just wanted to come down here and, you know, do the show from here tonight because I miss bartending and it just feels good to be back here. So that's kind of why we're doing it here. Just wanted to change it up a little bit. That's all. Um, so again, guys, I'm so grateful that you're deciding to come in and watch. I know you have a lot of choices for content to go to these days. So I'm very grateful that you're choosing to come here and, uh, spend your evening with me. I am very grateful for it. So again, keep engaging in those questions because I will watch them and I will point them out. Hello, Josephine. Hello, mom. And um, I'm going to keep, you know, comment, bringing them up because again, the beauty of being at a bar is we're all a part of this. And even though you guys aren't physically at the bar with me, you're virtually at the bar with me and we're all having this conversation together. So keep the comments up, keep it going. I'm really excited. Um, what am I drinking today? Since I'm here, it only seemed right to pull out a lovely can of Miller Lite. So I would love to know what you are drinking, okay? Cheers, guys. Hello, Taylor, hello, Fingers. Miss you guys. Okay, let me go ahead and tell you guys about our guest this evening. Um, his name is Kiefer Sykes. Kiefer is a professional basketball player. He has played in Italy, Korea, China, and Turkey. He went undrafted out of college. He played basketball at the University of Wisconsin Green Bay, um, but he was picked up by the Cleveland Cavaliers, then uh, trained with the San Antonio Spurs and did summer league with the Golden State Warriors. Um, he is a Chicago guy through and through. He has an amazing foundation called Free 10 Foundation. Um, I'll send you guys all those links afterwards that you can look on. Um, and he had a documentary made on him that is on Amazon Prime called Shy Town that I desperately am telling all of you guys, you need to watch this. Um, it is so eye-opening, it is so incredible. So let me go ahead and get Kiefer to join on in. But as I'm getting him to come on, guys, I would love to know what it is. Um, what was his favorite thing and least favorite thing about playing? Okay, interesting. So yeah, guys, tell me what everyone is drinking tonight currently, even if it's water. Again, it's totally fine, I don't mind. We're just go ahead, we're just connecting right now. What's up, Kiefer? What up? How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm loving that pro uh, hoodie you got on there. I think I need to get me one of those. Yeah, shout out to DB. Is he on here? Um, he. I know he should be. He I, I see you. What up, CB? I know he's oh, the best keeper. God. Tell me what you were drinking right now. Uh, well, I'm not drinking it right now. I, um, I just got the wine open. This is my new spot in Chicago since I'm home now. Mm -hmm. I had to rent out a spot because of uh the quarantine. Oh. Um, season looking pretty slow, but I got some uh, some red wine. Beautiful. Josh is always a good brand of red, always. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a U.S. brand. Uh, I picked up the little wine habit in Europe, so this is this an American brand wine that I like to drink when I'm back oh. in the States. Love it. Love it. Well, um, I'm so grateful that you are taking the time to come on here when db told me a little bit about you and i watched the documentary i was like oh my god i must talk to this human <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're DB so excited my guy i mean you see he's in the movie he's i've been training with him for like over five years now so uh he's more like a brother to me too so um, i was he's there the open this gym his first gym um yeah so it's like more than basketball so yeah That's he told me I about this opportunity and I, there's no problem Love it. Love it so much. So for it, guys, if you're just joining in right now, I would love to know um, to everyone who's watching what everyone is drinking with us this evening. If that is a big, is that that big or does it just look that big? Uh, no, it's a normal size. Okay. The, the glass, the way that it was in the camera, it looked like a giant fish bowl. I was like, are you going to put the whole bottle in there? <laughs> yeah, this is actually the first time I'm trying this one. It's called Reserve. I thought it was special. So. Ooh. I, uh, 
Cabernet Sauvignon, always a good choice. Always a delicious red. Lovely. CB All right. know about the wine. CB gave me like three wines. That's like my mentor. He's on here, but uh, someone said drink water. Yeah, and your vitamin C and D right now. The person who said to drink water is actually um, my cousin who just, we just found out she's pregnant. So we're very excited. We have a something to look forward to during these crazy times right now. Yep, nothing better than H2O. H2O. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Okay, so before we kind of dive into the documentary a little bit, the one thing that I think is so unique about your perspective is within the last six months, you have lived in China, in Italy, mm -hmm. and now you're back in America. Yeah. Your perspective has to be so incredibly unique. Can you just talk about that? Oh, uh, yeah. My perspective is... Um... I like to tell people I'm, I could teach you how to navigate through it. You know, God bless people, everybody who's uh, struggling with it or who's, you know, been affected by who's who's going through it. But, yeah, obviously I don't know how to navigate it. I'm doing my best to uh, to stay safe. But, um, but yeah, all the three countries that I've been in um, has been the epicenter of it at the, at the current time. So um, it is very unique. I had, I had just missed it in China. I had left and went to Italy. I thought I – you know, avoided it, but uh, then it came to Italy and then our season shut down. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's positive and negative. It depends on which which uh, perspective you want me to take on it, you know, because it's a, it's a lot of positive things. And, I mean, so I talk like about the positive and we got to just talk. Yeah, talk yeah. about the positive. What, what has been the positive of seeing all three countries from your point of view and being in them? Yeah, like think about it globally, or at least I live around the world. So, like, just to see how much you know, help, um, how much help each country is given is just a just sign of cultural respect. Like, you know, our China are shipping so many masks here and um, just to see how it and, uh, shows so much love and got so much appreciation for their country. Um, you know, just even being there and just um, witnessing it and uh, playing there my last two years is just a beautiful country and it's tragic that um, they're going through it. Um, I'm currently still on the contract there, but um, yeah, I mean, just such a beautiful country. Um, it's tough to for them to go through that, and then yeah, for the U.S., um, we're going through it now. We have the highest rates, so um, it's just something that um, it's history. I, I could say um, we're all living through it. It's changing our lives, and it's just changing the world itself. The world's never going to be the same from this. Never. Um, has there been any trends? Because obviously it's like you were first in China, you left before everything happened in China, and then you were in Italy and you were in Italy when it happened, but got to come back to America. But has there been any like trends that you've seen within the three countries where you can like, like obviously we know it's going to pass. I think we're all just at the point where it's like, when is it going to pass? So I guess, I, I don't know. I oh. guess the question I'm asking is like, what trends have you seen that, we can maybe something we could look forward to um the trend i've seen is um well from a for like china obviously that's where it started so it was hard to uh get a handle on it but um italy it had happened you know, right after fashion week so you know just due to those circumstances it spread fast and affected that um that country more than others and then yeah chicago is another you know huge country it's going to be hard to you know, lock everybody down, keep everybody home. So, I mean, the best thing we could do is just try to stay home. Because, yeah. Because um, I would say that's the thing, like, with Italy, you know, they, you know, they didn't realize it until it really hit them. And, I'm, and that's how it is in the U.S. But um, it's something that's serious. So, um, yeah, we just got to pick up on it faster, wash our hands more, uh, wear masks, wear gloves, try to get as much as you can. Amen to that. Amen. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive on in to the documentary Shy Town. It was incredible. So I, some people on here have seen it. Maybe some haven't. Everyone needs to watch it when you're when we're done with this interview because it's absolutely incredible. Um, but when the documentary started, it didn't just solely focus on you. Can you tell me and everyone the initial idea for Shy Town and how it evolved to be just your story? 
Uh, yeah, Shot Town, it was amazing. I was blessed to get that opportunity because, I mean, it's millions and thousands of basketball players that come from Chicago, and I have a film, and I'm happy it was something positive and helped. But, um, but yeah, it started as uh, my senior year. They were having this all-star game, uh, this film crew from New York. They were here filming Oprah, and then they were having this all-star game. I mean, we were having this all-star game for seniors, and they were basketball fans, so they wanted to connect, like, you know, basketball and them from being from New York, just the inner city and, you know, the the, the positive and negative effect of it. And, um, yeah, East-West basketball game. So they filmed a lot of basketball players. Uh, about, 30, about 30 of us were playing 15 on each team. I'm not sure how many they filmed, but, um, yeah, they came to my house, they filmed. Um, I went to a small school, Wisconsin Green Bay. So, I mean, I was lucky enough to be one of the – few freshmen that you know play in college I was actually the youngest freshman in the country and um, yeah. I was able to play and help my team early and they just you know wanted to keep following me in my story because it tied into a lot of things that was happening in Chicago you know me just being you know one of the better players and um just dealing with what we all deal with as Chicago basketball players just just you know people who live in Chicago in general um yeah. you know I was able to shine some light on that and a lot of different different people's story and my family's as well. Mm -hmm. So there were definitely some highs in the documentary and there were unfortunately some lows too, you know, personally and just kind of in all aspects of your life. During that period, during that period of time, what did you learn? Um, well, yeah, all of that stuff was real. So it was like, you know, it was like, they just capture what happened in real life. So that's what's so crazy about the movie is like, I didn't know what would happen in two weeks or three weeks or one year or two years, but they were just following me and capturing all this stuff. So like everybody could see how authentic it was. Like it, it, it's, yeah. it's for itself is a timeline. So, um, you know, I mean, I learned a, a lot of things going through that. You know, it was my life for like four years. I mean, it's a number of things that I learned. Like you said, I lost my father. Um, I became a better basketball player. I went to a whole different city, um, leaving my son, leaving my family to play where I was, where I became like the minority. So it really is crazy. DB just said it today and it just popped in my head. So um, one word is definitely learning how to adapt. Like being able to adapt, you know, has been something I've been doing my whole life, my whole career, like going to different countries, like leaving my family for eight months. Um, you know, playing for different teams. Like this this year I played for two teams in one season. So being able to just like adapt and um be professional and just have good character. I mean, those are things that that like that movie my my career could say. I love it. So those uh, it was like four, six years of your life they filmed that, is that correct? Five, six years? Uh five. Five. So those five years of your life, um, You've seen some shit, like to say yes. lightly, like you, you really did. And you're just 26 now. And yeah. for people going through a hard time or dealing with trauma, what would be your message for them? Um, so that's, that's what my foundation is about. We can speak on it later, but just, uh, just not, not letting like, um, you know, the circumstances that we are born into you know, a lot of people, we are born into situations where we are already, you know, behind the average level. So it's that much harder to get, you know, to the top, you know, for a lot of people. And then we lose a lot of hope. It's just a lot of pain. So um, it's something that's difficult. And you have to learn how to not let, like, poverty, um, not let your circumstances hold you back. And, like, every, it's not going to, you know, work out for everybody. But the more that we think and work in this mindset is how we, you know, change you know just change change the culture and just change ourselves as people amen talk about your foundation and uh free it was free 10 foundation mm -hmm. how did the idea come about uh the idea came about from my, my my best friend that's in prison you know just seeing how like one mistake changes life and you know we make mistakes all day every day you know it, and we you know take risks all day every day um some more than others, you know, speaking from whatever perspective, you know, like where I'm from, people would take risks, like they risk their lives every day, you know, making decisions. Um, and that's what he did. And um, 
you know, that, that leaves a lot of people hurt. You know, when someone kills somebody, these people have kids, and now no one can take care of their kid just because someone made that decision, you know. Um, whatever whatever the case may be, drunk driver, going to jail. But, like, a lot of kids, a lot of people, we, we start from behind because of these reasons. So, like, that's what my foundation just, you know, providing those resources for people who need them, who, who lack uh, financially, uh, with education, um, with role models, with parents. You know, we, my foundation is set to step in and help these people succeed because um, – a lot of these kids growing up, you know, and they closing schools and they're in these schools where the education is not, you know, putting them where they need to be to succeed in life. So I'm just, the foundation just to help them succeed in life and just help people who have been in these traumatic situations. Love it. Where can people um, donate um, if they are interested in just kind of, or like just learning more about the foundation at work? Can you just let them know where they can do that at? Uh, they can donate on, I have a website, keepersites.com. The Free 10 Foundation website is will be here in like a month. Um, I had just got everything um, organized with the paperwork, the 501c3, uh, to make it official non for profit. So um, the website is coming, we would donate. But um, yeah, you can either email free 10 foundation at Gmail so we can give you news and things like that. Like right now, it's really not about the donation. We just continue to build up the awareness. I've already had events before the, you know, work was officially like all out of my pocket and different sponsors. So we just want to get to the kids and just get to, get the information. I work with like four or five non for profit organization, um, Lost Boys. I mean, the list goes on. But um, yeah, you can just click on my website just to get more information about it and uh, right. see if anybody that you know fit the mold. You know, the link is on my page, just keepersites.com. Perfect. I will make sure that I share it afterwards. But guys, you can always go to Keeper's profile and the link will be there. So Keeper, let's go ahead um, really quick. One more cheers. We're going to get into rapid fire <laughs> questions, okay? So. I need to see who else drinking. Uh, what what, what yeah. people are drinking? I need to check some of these, these comments. I was going to say, guys, I don't think everyone told us. We know there were some water people. If anyone yeah, else is drinking water. with us, please let us know. We would love to know what you are drinking with us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Kiefer, first thing that comes to your mind, try not to hesitate as best as possible. Um, and let's just have fun with Pop it, okay? Quiz. Pop quiz. Okay, someone said red wine, love red All wine. Right. Bobby's drinking wine. Wait, wait, okay, wait, wait, so wait, what wait, 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 wait. Sangria. All right, now I'm ready. Okay, what's something people would be surprised to know about you? That I do yoga. Ooh, okay. If they didn't watch Top, the movie, they'd be surprised when I do that. Okay. Top three favorite Chicago athletes of all time. Derrick Rose, Jabari Parker, and Alfonso McKinney. In okay. no order specifically. Okay. What is the kindest thing a stranger has done for you? Um gave me two dollars when I was a kid. <laughs> I really needed that's it at so the candy sweet. store, and it's like, it's, uh, I don't know, this dude, he had a lot of money. He just pulled out a wad of money and gave me $2. I was excited. Oh, love that. Okay, what trend would you like to see disappear forever? <laughs> trend I like to see disappear forever, like um, rappers promoting drugs. Okay. Coffee or tea? Tea. Tea? What's the most embarrassing thing that happened to you in high school? In high school? <laughs> That's a hard question without thinking about that. The most embarrassing you thing? Um, I don't know. I may have to have my friends answer that one. They're more funny than me. They might remember something better than me. How about let's this? Let's come, let's, let's, let's come back to it because I don't want to skip okay. it. Okay, let's come back okay. to it. So think, think about that. Um, what is the best piece of advice someone has given you? Um, the best piece of advice? Um, it gets greater later. That's it what my gets? dad would always say. It gets greater later. Whatever is a good habit, a bad habit, you working hard, you're not working hard, it's going to get greater later. Love that. Love it. Okay. What's one thing you still have from your childhood? One thing that I still have, um, mm -hmm. my childhood. What? 
Um, maybe just that I, I just love cars. I always loved like the Hot Wheels when I was a kid. I never like watched like the crazy television shows, none of that, other than SpongeBob. Okay. But um, but um, I like Hot Wheels, and I still love cars, okay. and I like still collect little cars with my son, toy cars, <laughs> Lamborghinis. Oh my god, that's fantastic! Mm -hmm. Okay, what is your favorite movie? Uh, my favorite movie outside of Shot Town, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I got two. I would say two. Uh, Paid in Full. That's just my when I'm chilling watching movies. But my favorite basketball movie is Through the Fire by the Sebastian Fire. Telfair. Okay. Mm -hmm. What is the closest thing to real magic that we have on Earth? The closest thing we have to real magic is um, closest thing to real magic. Um, that's a good question. Come back to that because I want to give a good answer. Okay. All right. And then this is something I'm going to ask everyone who is watching as well. Um, what is an odd or weird talent that you have? An odd or weird, weird talent? Mm-hmm. Um, I like to think that I can sing. Not, not, I don't know if it's good. I don't know if it's good, but I just like to think that I can sing. What's your like go-to so, so shower song then? Um, it's it's kind of weird. I like to sing rap song. I like to like. I just like to sing. Like I just, I can sing anything. So so sing something. It's a weird talent, but I can do it. <laughs> you gotta give me something. If you're talking about you can sing, you gotta give me something. <laughs> no, because it's silly. It's in a funny way. <laughs> no, that's how I am. I think I sound like Demi Lovato and Christina Aguilera, but in reality, I probably sound like a screeching car wheel. So no one needs yeah. to hear that. <laughs> yeah, it's silly. Okay. Um, it's would goofy. you rather be <laughs> all goofy? Yes, no, for sure. Okay. Would you rather be stuck with someone who talks nonstop or be stuck on an island alone? I could be stuck on an island alone. I, I've been overseas, I, so I could just, I need my peace. If somebody talking, it's gone. I can't listen. Got you. Not okay. too long. What is your favorite place you've lived in so far? Um, Country or like, apartment uh let's like, go uh, with like country state because you, you've lived in a few different states too so where where's you're in your favorite place that you've been or yeah favorite place favorite you've been country hmm this is gonna be crazy my favorite country like the experience i had there for the time being was in south korea when i was like living next to seoul oh wow that's amazing what's something about so south and my team was good. We won. We just went in all the games. We won a championship. So it was like a fun experience from start to finish. What is something about South Korea that people would be surprised to know? Um, that they're like way ahead of their time. Like they're in a fashion sense. Like they, they were wearing like masks for fashion like four years ago. Like, yeah, like we, we get out of our, some of our fashion sense from them. I mean, obviously, we have fashion sense, too, but, like, we definitely uh, could take some ideas from them with, like, bags and stuff. They were, they, were really, they were really into fashion. Even though it's crazy, I would live in Milan, the fashion capital, but Asians could dress. I mean, I'm pretty sure you, everyone knows that. I yeah, saw that. very true. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who should my next guest be? Who should your next guest be? Mm -hmm. um, well... I'm thinking about DB or just Chicago or? We, I got to have DB on. DB was one of my first guests. So anyone you think who would be like an inspiring story to tell or just maybe someone who could make people laugh? Uh, my best friend, Jared, probably could do both. Okay. Yeah, he beat cancer. He beat bone cancer. So, you know, he could definitely tell you about, you know, overcoming something and achieving and, um, just adversity and obstacles, but definitely he's just a bright spirit. He could definitely make you laugh too. All right. He's, I, he's, he I trained with DB and he played college in Chicago State and stuff, but that's that's my friend, so I'm biased. 
Okay, no, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, mm -hmm. What has something yeah, that well, you... Yeah, well, Alfonso McKinney for sure, like, Alfonso McKinney, Derrick Rose. I'll take uh, all of Patrick us. Beverly, Patrick Beverly would be interesting. I don't know if you would be able to get me all the above. We'll take all of the above. I think all of their stories would be so fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Kiefer, what have you learned about yourself during this time? What I've learned about myself is that um, is that I really just can't stop working. I'm still like trying to train. I'm still like trying to do a lot of business ventures. Right, not trying. I'm actually am doing like you know now that we can't get in gyms. I'm just working on business ventures and things like that. Mm -hmm. I'm just still like running around crazy. I'll probably slow down. Okay. I I feel that I'll sleep when I'm dead has been kind of my motto. It gets me going for a while until I like yeah. ultimately crash and burn. And and then I go and then I do it all over again. <laughs> okay, said, what will be Fields, the first Kevin Fargo, yeah, that was a good name. Kevin Garnett would yeah. be dope. That would be dope. I don't have that connection, but if you do, that would be great. Um, what's going to be the first thing that you do? I'm just throwing it out in the universe. Yes. Kiefer, what's going to be the first thing you do when all of this is over? I'm going to drop down and pray to God and thank him. <laughs> thank him Love for that. getting us through. Love it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I will give you the option of for what real. question you want to answer. Do you want to answer the embarrassing high school question oh, or or what is the closest thing to real magic that we have on earth um i need to get a little bit more think time the closest thing to magic mm. it's an interesting question i want to have a good answer but um i'll just i'll just go back to, well, i don't want to get too spiritual but um god you can. Magic i got it God, God is magic as well. And um, my yoga instructor likes to say that water is magic. Like, he's like, H2O, you need to drink a lot of water. Um, like, water is the healthiest thing. Uh, like, 70% of the earth is water. Um, like Bruce Lee says, you need to be water, just be calm. You know, water is the most powerful thing in the world, so it's magic. It is. I will always I like say that. that to my teammates in Turkey because they would see me drinking so much water. And they're like, why are you always drinking water? I'm like, because like, I got to play the whole game and I'm be tired. Like, so, yeah, I drink a lot of water. Water is magic. Water is magic. I love it. Okay, we are going to raise our glasses for a toast. Um, so everyone who is watching, please raise your glasses. And the toast is from BB, Kobe what Bryant. Up, bro? I got the pro on. He does. He does. Okay, so this is from Kobe Bryant, and he says, everything negative, pressure, challenges, are all an opportunity for me to rise. So cheers to all of us taking the opportunity to rise. Shout out to Kobe. Always Shout, out. Shout out to Kobe. Cheers, guys. Um, so, Keeper, before you go, I just want to say, because I've, you know, been – I've been studying up on you and reading your story and I am going to put this out in the universe. I am manifesting this. If it hasn't already been manifested before, I don't know how it's going to happen, but you are going to be in the league. You are going to Ooh. win a championship and you are going to be the reason that a team wins a championship. Like there's yeah, no like questions that. asked. Okay. I, I don't know how put it's going to okay. happen. Um, the road is never – no one wants an easy road because I don't think it's worth having then, but it's going to happen for you. And I can't wait to just sit back and drink a beer and, and, and watch you do your magic. Cause it's, it's, you're incredible and you're going to just keep doing incredible things, dude. I appreciate it. You know, we never took the easy road and, you know, I definitely feel like the time is, is going to come. I just seen, you know, seeing the road, seeing how it goes. So definitely keep going up, keep pushing. I got it. You got it. All right, Keeper, thank I'm you so much. You, I'm going to perform when you at the game and got that beer. So I got okay. you. Okay. You better. Shot. You better. Okay, Keeper, I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, guys. That was Keeper Sykes. Um,
So again, really quick, you can watch his documentary on Amazon Prime. It is called Shy Town. Everyone take the time, watch it tonight. It is so worth it. It is so inspiring. And believe me, you're going to want to remember this guy's name. You're going to want to remember this guy's name. Yes, Jake, I am at the pub tonight. Um, I just, I wanted to change up the, the scenery. So I thought I could just come here and sit for a while. So, okay, guys, before I go ahead and wrap it on up, let me go ahead and tell you about tomorrow's guest. Tomorrow's guest is going to be Nikki Lopez. He is the second baseman for the Kansas City Royals. Nikki is from the Chicagoland area. Our dads, many moons ago, played 16-inch softball, which was this, the king of all sports in the Midwest, definitely in Chicago. So I'm really excited to talk to Nikki tomorrow and kind of get his perspective about when baseball is going to happen and if it's going to happen. So that'll be tomorrow, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Guys, thank you again for choosing to come in tonight. Um, I know you guys have a lot of options, so I'm really grateful. And I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Everyone, take care, stay safe, stay at home, and um, have a good one. Bye-bye.